Welcome to the Simpler Business Podcast, where we talk about ways to do what you love and serve your people in a way that brings you income and freedom. I'm your host, Marissa Roberts. Join me as I chat with my favorite entrepreneurs about how they simplify their biz so that you can simplify yours. One size fits all business models do not work for those of us who are both entrepreneurs and introverts. If you're wondering whether your quiet nature or your need to recharge regularly with plenty of alone time is going to get in the way of growing and scaling your business, this is the episode for you. Host of the League of Extraordinary Introverts podcast, Catherine McKenzie-Smith is an intuitive business strategist and leadership coach helping introverts understand themselves, create businesses that light them up, and cut through the noise to connect with the people who need to hear what they have to say. Catherine champions introverted and highly sensitive leaders to find their own way to shine and succeed in their life and business. After spending a lifetime feeling like there was something wrong with her for being quiet, she's on a mission to make sure no quiet soul ever feels that way again. She's on a mission to help as many gentle leaders as possible reconnect with who they really are, understand their energy, and make a meaningful contribution to the world. Having worked in the fast-paced extroverted television industry for almost 10 years and the online business world for just as long, Catherine has plenty of experience being the introvert in the room and developing leadership skills and energy management skills as a result. I'm really, really excited to chat with Catherine today about creating an introvert-friendly business because I'm very introverted myself. And I let it hold me back for years and keep my businesses small because I thought that if I grew too much or I was too successful that I would burn out trying to keep it all together. When actually all I needed was to learn how to work with my natural strengths, interests and talents and show up consistently in a way that actually suited me. So if you are finding yourself thinking about the same kind of idea around business and life, you are going to love the kind of world that Catherine can open up for you. So welcome, Catherine. I'm so excited you're here. Hi, thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited too. I just, when I listen to your podcast and I go and have a look at your content on your website, I just feel like you completely get me. Like, you know, all of the inner thoughts that I have. It's like you understand that I am passionate about what I do, but I just can't be full on on 24 7 and before I came across your content and your podcast I felt really guilty about that I felt like oh you know why why am I doing a business I love but feeling like oh it's taking too much away from me so when I found your stuff I was like oh okay I'm not alone someone gets me that's so wonderful to hear that makes me so happy (laughs) (laughs) oh good good well for the listeners who are brand new to you who might not have met you before do you want to tell us a little bit about your background and your experience in business as an introvert absolutely Absolutely. Um, Oh my goodness, it's such a big story now (laughs) because we're so far down the track. Basically, uh, my my business started really accidentally. So I moved to Sydney to work in TV, which was a career that I kind of already had started. And I moved down because that's just where all the work was and just randomly fell into blogging back in the time when blogging was like the thing where you'd like have blogs you were subscribed to and you'd go around every day and read all the new blog posts. And it was kind of a creative outlet and also a way of keeping in contact with all my friends and family in Brisbane where I was from and it just sort of evolved out of that as I became more despondent I guess with working in TV and feeling like I mean literally being told by people oh your personality doesn't suit that role or you're too quiet to do that or I don't think it's going to be a good fit and those sorts of things despite the fact that I always like showed up and did exactly what was required of me it sort of started to become, yeah, that creative outlet that I was fully in control of for the first time in my life and meeting a whole bunch of bloggers in Sydney that then led to realizing that, hey, this could be a business. This is the start of this kind of online business, not the start of online business, but it was really this evolution from blogging and creating in that way to how content could then be turned into a a million different kinds of businesses. And so it sort of led into that. And then just in the way that we're all conditioned to be more extroverted or to follow certain strategies and ways of doing things in a super extroverted way, just went all guns blazing into starting my business. And within a couple of years, found myself in a similar place to 
what you mentioned, just feeling really drained all the time, feeling like, oh my goodness, how can I possibly grow this business to be at the level that I want or need it to be to financially support me and to feel that, that kind of all of the things that I want it to be without burning out anymore. Like I can't possibly take on any more clients because I'm just absolutely exhausted. How can I possibly sustain this? And I ended up walking away from my business for nearly three years and helping my partner with a new venture that he was working on. And yeah, over time realized that this isn't actually because I don't love it. It's because I was doing it in a way that was not in alignment with my strengths, with my energetic needs. And I had no boundaries around what that looks like. So it did feel like my business was constantly taking away from me, which kind of brings us to the last few years where it has been a whole new journey of creating a business that feels sustainable, that actually supports me, that allows me to take time off when I need to, when my energy needs that reset. And yeah coming to I guess where we are right now so that's kind of a long-winded way (laughs) to bring us to where we are today I love that I had a very similar start with blogging it was like 2009 for me and I started just blogging about everyday life and then I started blogging about like organizing and then my business started from that Um, and it's funny what you say about burnout too because I kind of had a similar trajectory with my organizing business at beautifullyorganized.com because the blog kind of took off And so Mm. as a result, I was like, okay, well, I'm going to turn this into a business, just like you said with yours. And then, (laughs) so I thought to myself, oh, well, I'll just go to other mums' houses and organize them, make their life easier Mm. with little babies and toddlers, Um, which is a really good concept, except I also had babies and toddlers. So I was spending my days (laughs) going to other mums' houses and making their life easier. And then I was coming home like physically exhausted and emotionally Mm. drained and I'd walk in the door my kids would be like mommy and I was like no I can't do it (laughs) and so that's I think that's why you know I kind of started looking into like online options like courses and Mm. ebooks and stuff like that because the same sort of thing you just kind of you jump in because you love it and then you just get completely horribly burnt out and then you feel really bad that you're not loving it anymore, but you actually still love the thing. It's just the yeah. way that you actually approach it and your business model that makes a really big difference. Yeah. Oh, I feel like, honestly, Absolutely. this is what I mean when I feel like you get me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really interesting. I think it's probably worse, or not worse, but more difficult now for people who are just starting out now because there is so much noise and there are so many people teaching their version of success their models of success you know join my program and I will you know help you hit this amount of money or this level of success as perceived by them based on the results that they got doing it the way that they did it Mm -hmm. and that you said it in the intro that one size fits all model is actually just not really possible for everyone and I don't know about yourself or anyone else listening but I've never fit into any kind of box it's actually been one of the things that I've had to unravel over the years to understand that it's actually okay to be that way because from when we're really young and we're at school we're kind of all pushed into a certain level of sameness yeah you need to fit into this box otherwise you know your parents get called to the school or you get these certain comments and you know on your report cards or you're told a certain thing by teachers Yeah, yeah yeah exactly and business is no different we don't start businesses to continue trying to thrive in systems that aren't set up for us to thrive, like, you know, lots of people leave the workforce because it just doesn't suit their quiet nature when you're kind of forced to be in a co-working kind of situation. I know that's why I did it. I just needed to get out and be in my own schedule, be in my own space, have the ability of that flexibility in my day. And that just never worked in any career, but definitely not in my TV career. And Yet I see people over and over again, and I did it myself, creating businesses that are still following those rules. And the reason we started businesses was not to do that. Yeah. But it just is so easy to fall back into it, especially when other people that we perceive are more successful than us are telling us we have to do it that way. Otherwise, we'll never be successful. 
Yeah, that's such a big light bulb moment for me because, you know, you're right, you know, we leave the corporate world because we think I can't fit in this box. It's it's not, it doesn't suit me. It's not aligned with my natural strengths. And then we we start our own businesses and we go, oh, i got to follow the person who's making, you know, 100K a year, a million a launch, or because if it's only, if it's working for them, it's the only option. And then we're like, yeah, no, I have to escape this too because this doesn't fit me either. So yeah, <laughs> it's a cycle that we're constantly doing. And, you know, it's funny, but once I started getting a bit more in tune with my natural natural strengths and my natural energy levels and finding easier ways to do things, that's when I started selling more stuff without having to be mm-hmm. really salesy. Like people that were aligned with me just kind of came and stayed at that point. I didn't have to prove myself anymore. So mm. makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's so funny as well because we'll often follow somebody else's marketing tactics and whatnot. And the thing is that what appeals to us is most likely going to appeal to the things, you know, that our ideal clients, because they like what we like, you know, there's a certain level of alignment there. And so when we're following strategies and things that don't actually, we don't even really like, but we're doing it because someone told us we should, then we're actually not even calling in the right people most of the time because we're following what, you know, we're following someone else's plan. And so we're calling in the people that they're targeting, but we're not actually necessarily creating an environment that feels safe to the people that we actually are in alignment with. It's such a weird thing. That's so true. And then we wonder Mm. why the people we're attracting are so what we perceive to be high maintenance because they're not aligned with us. Yeah, the draining. Oh, my God. You end up, this is why I walked away from my business because I had a full you know, client docket and I had a wait list and I did all of the things I was meant to do. And I was so burnt out and drained that even the part, which is only like the 10% part, which is the actual service that you offer, the coaching, the whatever it might be, even I was coming off those calls just being absolutely exhausted. And it was because the people that I had called in were just not in alignment with the ones that I really know are like my soulmate clients. So Yeah. yeah, it's an interesting thing to observe yeah for sure and you know I talk about burnout and overwhelm a lot too because as an introvert I think these two they're really big factors that can hinder our success as as entrepreneurs they're the things that make us go maybe I've made the right made the wrong choice maybe I shouldn't be doing this after all and how we can set up the running of our business to allow for space well you know if we have space so that we can feel recharged or feel calmer or feel more aligned and we're not suffering for that overwhelm and burnout I think that's that makes a huge difference doesn't it absolutely and really the first way to start even knowing what that is is to actually understand that we aren't just one thing yeah. we aren't just an entrepreneur we aren't just an introvert we aren't just this one identity we are a tapestry of lots of different things put together and so even our friends who might be introverts and work in the same kind of business model as us and do similar sorts of things the way that they work and what works best for them isn't necessarily still going to work for us and so that self-inquiry which for more introverted people is something that we're actually really good at but I think we've been kind of talked out of listening to just by being in the world and when we know who we are when we know what it is that is that our strengths is what works best for us is what makes us feel energized is what makes us need to then take a break you know if we've got an event we have to go to blocking time out of our schedules having that awareness first then creating a schedule that aligns with that, knowing that it's probably going to ebb and flow maybe throughout the week or the day or the month, depending on how you plan your week or day or month, Mm -hmm. and then actually working with that. I find so many of us, what we're we're doing is we're working against our natural tendencies because we think there's something wrong with us. And when we actually start to listen and pay attention and go, "Mm, my energy is not that great this week. You know, I've got this thing I call bare minimum business where I'm like, "Mm, not the best energy this week. What are the things I absolutely have to show up for? And then what else can be put 
on the back burner for this week. And that takes practice. You know, it is not something that we just naturally go, oh, I'm I'm just going to do that because there's so much conditioning. There's so much of that good girl mentality that so many of us have and that I don't want to let people down Mm -hmm. and, oh, it's so unacceptable to cancel or to move things around or to do this, this and this. But when we remember that we're creating these businesses for ourselves to be the best we can be, that's how we can show up better for our people and our clients and our whoever else we're taking care of within that Mm -hmm. to make sure that, yeah, we're actually out in the world doing the best we can. And we cannot do that when we're burnt out and overwhelmed and everything just feels like a lot. I love that concept that you said about bare minimums just then. And I thought, <laughs> I thought to myself, as you were saying that, I thought, you know, I do that in family life. Like if I'm mm-hmm. run down or overworked, I'm like, right, guys, all I've got to focus on is get people fed, uh, make yes. sure the dishes are done. That's pretty yeah. much it, right? <laughs> Cooking yeah. and dishes, everything else just can fade into the background today. It's too much. But I've never given myself permission to do that in business because I always feel like I'm going to get in trouble, even though I'm the CEO, like I'm the person, <laughs> yes. I'm the person but I still yeah. have this need to live up to a certain standard, even yeah. though it's making me feel like crap if it's too much. Yeah. 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 yeah, it's so funny. It took me like five years to stop sitting at my desk at 9 a.m. on a Monday morning. Yes. You know, saying, oh, I must start work now because it's 9 a.m. Monday morning. If I don't start off the week on a good foot and sit here, it's going to be a terrible week and how can I ever be successful? And the reality is like most days I don't start work till 2 o'clock in the afternoon because mm-hmm. that's my energy. That's when yes. I work best. Same. I'm like time. two hours max, <laughs> two hours max a yeah. day. I don't care when in the day it happens. I'd prefer mm. to be on my bed with my laptop and a cat next yeah. to me. And every yeah. Thursday I go to the movies and I don't book everything, anything in at all. And I'm like, ah, oh. but it still feels a bit like people are people going to take me seriously? Yes, they yeah. will. I've got to get over that sort of you know, internal judgment because you're right. As soon as you start aligning your schedule and your tasks and your content and your your offers, it, when I align them to my actual energy, it's not hard work anymore. It doesn't even yeah. feel like I've sat down to do work. I'm just kind of chilling with a mm. the laptop then doing stuff I love talking about. Yeah, it's a really big difference, isn't it? Yeah, and so many people that I work with, sort of are like, oh, but I just want to do the thing that's my business. So I just want to do the coaching sessions. I don't care about any of the other stuff. And unfortunately, that's not really how it works unless you have the money to pay people to do all your admin, to do all your marketing, to do your social media, to do all your sales calls. And then you have to manage the people anyway. (laughs) Then you have to manage them anyway, which to me is the worst. Like I don't want to do that. I'd rather do all those other things. But how can we bring that through every facet of our business Mm -hmm. how can we bring the joy of I work with lots of coaches and energy healers who you know love what they do but don't infuse that in every part of their business they don't necessarily always use those tools and skills and modalities to bring that energy through when they're sitting down to do their bookkeeping or their admin tasks or whatever. And actually Mm -hmm. just how does that become its own, you know, your business has, I talk about this a lot, as its own entity so that it's not taking from you, but there's this kind of co-creation of it's got all these moving parts. How do I bring the joy of that bigger mission, that bigger purpose that I'm even creating this for into my admin tasks into yeah. my social media scheduling into all the little pieces that I have to do throughout the day and also trust that not all of those things need to get done like no one's going to die if I yeah. don't get my newsletter out tomorrow you know it's yeah, kind it of like end. the it's like holding the bigness of both it's like the bigness of this glorious purpose and this bigger alignment and this energetic kind of life you know legacy that we're all kind of in some way even if it's subconsciously working towards and also knowing that if some of these things don't get done nobody's going to care nobody's even going to notice yeah your and subscribers aren't going to world it's like, and go with yeah. <laughs> yes. I didn't get oh please email. send another email to my already packed inbox yeah <laughs> so it's kind of being able to like hold both 
that it's not just, you know, it's big in that there is, and that can be really overwhelming sometimes in itself, just the bigness of the work that we feel called to do and also the insignificance of what does and doesn't get done yeah. on a daily basis. It's not like with kids where if they don't get fed, you know, that's bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they literally don't survive. That's, yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there will come a time where the business <laughs> doesn't survive either if we're not injecting some energy into it. But, you know, one taking one day off to yep. rest and step away, giving ourselves permission to do that allows us to come back fresh tomorrow yes. or Better sometimes have to- yeah, sometimes have totally new ideas when we're out doing something else that we never would have had if we'd like chained ourselves to our computers. Yeah. I'm a bit like that with procrastination. If I'm procrastinating on yes. something, I tell myself, all right, maybe uh, it's a sign that I'm not meant to do it right now. Like I'm meant to wait yeah. because a great idea might be going to hit me in two hours. And I try and sit down and do it now. It's not going to come to me. So I'm like, even if there's a deadline, I'm like, I'll just do 10 minutes. And then if I get into flow, great. But if I don't, I can go, well, I worked on it and it wasn't meant to be. And then, yeah, inspiration hits like that evening. So, yeah, it helps a lot, I think, to kind of, yeah, go with your energy, go with your natural Mm -hmm. instincts. Yeah, makes a big difference. When you're in alignment, you know, when the flow is happening, some tasks, if you're forcing yourself to do them, take three hours. Mm-hmm. Whereas if you'd stepped away and done something else, you might come back and it takes 10 minutes because the energy is right. And yeah, yeah it's such an interesting thing because it's so against everything that we've been taught and all the messaging that's been oh, sent to us. It's so <laughs> different to what you get from the minute you start your first part-time job. It's all you know, yeah. have you done enough tasks? Are you here on time? I've monitored the length of your toilet breaks, all of that stuff. Yeah. Or are you turning up rain, hail or shine? I don't care if you've got a sniffle, you still need to be here. Yeah, it's completely the opposite and it's so much better. Yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> so I was thinking then for people who were like, yes, this sounds like a good fit. I'm ready to, you know, make my business a bit more introvert friendly. Have you got any particular like a little tip or a strategy or something that you do that will help people with running their business or growing their business without feeling like they're on 24 seven. Cause you've mentioned before, mm. um, I don't know if you mentioned going to an event or a conference or if it just made me think of that, um, like booking in time around it. Like if I'm going to mm-hmm. say, for example, go to Sydney for a conference, I, sh- I could book in an extra day afterwards to rest and recharge and not actually go back into meetings the next day and you said something along those lines and I was like ding okay I'm definitely going to do that so have you got anything else like that where we can like yeah we can action that yeah absolutely and it comes back to what I said earlier about knowing your energy and probably the first thing that I recommend to people who are just starting out is to track keep track in some way Uh of how your energy is working. So for me, I know that my most productive time of the day is between 3 and 8 p.m. And so that's allowed me to give myself permission to be as slow as I want all morning. And similar to like you said, as long as I usually just pick one thing, this is the one thing that needs to get done today. And sometimes I'll do more than that. And some days I'll get that bare minimum done. And just having that awareness allows us to then know, okay, Every time I go to an event, I feel like I need the whole of the next day, depending on if there's travel involved, how long it is. You know, if it's a three-day conference, I'm probably going to take three days off afterwards. (laughs) Not that I go to many of those, especially not these days. But actually having an awareness of that. I know that I like to do my calls if I can for my clients Mm -hmm. on a set number of days. If I have to have be on every day of the week, I will be just so exhausted. I would rather have calls only on two or three days of the week so that my Mondays, my Fridays usually are the days that I can be working on quiet behind the scenes work and not not overstuffing those days, but actually that has then led to, okay, well, that then means that my client coaching program 
I only see this many clients at a time. You know, it kind of starts, once we have that awareness, it actually ripples out into every decision that we're making that's in alignment with our own needs, our energy, our strengths, and then the bigger goals and mission that we have, the work that we're trying to do. You know, all of those things kind of form that central part because then every decision gets easier. It's then easier to say no to things because it's like, hmm, is that an alignment for me? How does my energy feel? What day would I be able to do, you know, that podcast interview? Okay, it's going to be this day. And actually then all your decisions then take out the overthinking because it's all coming from a place of that deeper knowing of who you are, that self-awareness and really putting your energy and yourself first in your business because I've been there. We've all been there where we've created businesses that absolutely wear us out and that's not what I want. It's not sustainable. And so that's probably my biggest one because once you have that awareness, once you actually even start tracking it a little bit, you're then able to make so many more aligned decisions from that place in terms of, oh, okay, I don't do live videos every day or this is how often I'm posting on social media because it all comes back down to, what does my week look like? How is my energy this week? What have I got on? And what time do I need to take away from work because I have the kids, because of other stuff going on, or because of just the time that I need to refresh and re-energize? Yeah. I think that's important to note too is that, you know, like I talk about my kids a lot because they're primary school age and they do take up a lot of, you know, time and emotional space in a good way. I love them. But if I didn't have kids, I'd be like, well, that doesn't mean I I don't deserve to have downtime just because I don't have dependence. You're right. It's about how you're feeling, not necessarily does your situation match up with other people who are busy, traditionally busy. Mm. You know, it's okay to have as much time and space as you actually need. There's nobody out there who can tell you better than you can how much space you need, how much recharge time, how much rest time. We know in our gut when we actually really sit down and listen to our body, you know, we know when we're exhausted. We know when we're saying yes to something that doesn't feel right and then trying to find a way out of it later. I love your idea of starting with your calendar and kind of building in space that way and like, you know, maybe I should stop letting people book in things on days that I don't want to do them because I'm so focused on them being able to do it. And I should start focusing on no honoring my natural, my natural like rhythms and just have booking available on the days where I feel my best because I'm going to deliver better anyway then. Yeah. That was a big light bulb. Thank you. Mm. Just a little sneaky side note on that one. Cause I do this, I'll go through. So with my one-on-one kind of high-end clients they do three calls a month and then I book out the fourth day of the month that would be on at the same time because that's kind of their implementation week but it also um when I've only got a couple of days open for people to book in sometimes people will come back and say oh I'm so sorry I work full-time I can't do this or whatever and then you can make a decision from your energy as to whether you say to them okay well this I could make this time available for you so it's kind of a little bit of both because you know in your mind oh I could probably fit someone in on this day if I needed to yeah and then you can make a decision that's going to suit both of you as opposed to just having every day open and people can book in whenever I actually reduce my times down as much as possible so that then I can open them up on a case by case basis, depending on what, whether someone's a really good fit, what other stuff I've got going on, you know, at that time. And so, yeah, it's kind of going way in to then be able to expand in a way. People feel special then anyway. Yeah. So it's, yeah, because you're sort of making a decision of like, oh, I really want to work with you though. Yeah. So I could do a Saturday morning. You know, I don't have kids. And so I have so much flexibility. I can't do nights because of another business that we have, but it allows you to then still be fully in control of your schedule, yeah. which is really important to me. Yes. But I also want to be of service and show up for my people, but also like still on my terms. <laughs> yes, exactly. In a way that feels good for everybody. Yeah. Oh. Exactly. Yeah. Catherine, thank you so much for being here today and sharing that because I just feel like, oh, everything's like, everything just feels easier when we approach it from this sort of angle. And I've really enjoyed chatting with somebody who 
you know, understands the importance of this sort of thing and how much of a positive impact it can really have on not just your business outcomes, but your overall well-being as well. And I think they're really intertwined. So thank you so much. Oh, thank you, Marissa. Great questions. And I just love (laughs) talking to you about this today. It you know, when you're in your business, you never really know. And it means a lot to share these ideas that I've just sort of like, oh, this is what works for me. And to actually know other people feel that too, which is what we're all trying to do at the end of the day. So I really appreciate that. And I love that we've been able to talk about some things today that have given us both some insights on how we can just keep showing up in that way as introverts in our business. Yeah, me too. And I know there's some of the listeners out there will want to dive even deeper. So where can they find you? What's the easiest way? Is it socials or website? Or do you have a resource that you want to share? How can they get more from you? Probably the best, easiest way to connect with me. I know pretty much everyone's on Instagram. I'm on there at Miss underscore KMS. I also have a free Facebook group called Introvert Friendly Business, which there is a link in the description in my Instagram profile that will take you there. And probably just like an easy way to start thinking about your business in this way in terms of thinking about the energy and the making it easy and that flow. I have a workshop that has a heap of resources with it as well called the Content Ecosystem. And it's actually super aligned for introverts because it's not just thinking about you know, it's exactly like I said today, like having those important things, your energy, your needs, your offers, your mission, all at the center of the ecosystem Mm -hmm. and how everything that you create can be repurposed and reused and shared in different ways so that you're actually using less thinking time and less energy, but able to put out a lot more content because I know that that's something that lots of introverts struggle with, being on multiple platforms, having to show up in different ways online to get their work out into the world. And so that's kind of been, I created it for myself with my own introvert energy in mind. And it's something that I know it helps a lot of people just rethink the way that they're showing up and creating content online. So that's yeah, the content ecosystem.com is where that one is. And that's also in my Instagram bio as well. Awesome. And I'll make sure I add links to the show notes too, to your Instagram and to the ecosystem as well. So people can find it really easily. Because I think you're right. That's really one of the things that comes up again and again with my clients is I know I should be doing this, but I just can't do it consistently. And I talk about consistency a lot, but everyone has a different version of what's holding them back from being consistent. And for introverts, I think you're right. It's really that whole, I want to do it, but I physically just don't feel like I can. So that sort of resource would be really helpful. Yeah, it definitely helps. I'm a super inconsistent person, again, because of my energy. You know, you add in lots of different factors into who we are as people and what our needs are. And consistency actually has a really ableist tone to it because Mm -hmm. it's just assuming that people have the mental and physical capacity to show up the exact same every single day of the week. And I definitely can't, and I would never pretend to. And so even just accepting that has really helped, but having systems and processes in place to make that easier to still be present without having to be all guns blazing energy out every single day has absolutely changed the way that I think about business and content and everything. Yeah, that's amazing. Oh, this has been such a good chat. And I really hope that everybody listening out there has enjoyed it too. It's been a wonderful time chatting with Catherine. And yeah, I'll see you in the next episode. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Simpler Business Podcast. If you did, please subscribe, rate and review us on Apple Podcasts. There's a link in the show notes to make it nice and easy for you, just the way we like it. If you're ready to simplify and scale your business, you can get started with my free audio class at marissaroberts.com. See you next time.